With one of the most compelling modern practices, Kiki Smith moves and disturbs with imagery that's equal parts enchanting and visceral. Guided by a deep curiosity about what it means to be human, for all of the accompanying power, majesty, doubt, and suffering that comes with just existing, she probes at life's greater mysteries such as spirituality and death, and delves fearlessly into the very organic stuff we're made of by examining the morbid and miraculous workings of the body, with a particular focus on how the female body fares in all this. Today we're taking a look at this impactful and pioneering feminist artist who also happens to have an exhibition of new work on view at Pace Gallery in New York. This is Several Circles. Flowers, woodland fauna, human body parts, and women, some nude, some dismembered, others hybrid, are among the beguiling subject matters that American multidisciplinary artist Kiki Smith has revisited for the better part of 50 years. Like something out of a Grimm's fairy tale, her aesthetic is an elixir of mysticism, Catholic iconography, anatomical study, folklore, and folk art, but you can also detect hints of Smith's feminist forebears lurking in the mix, including Louise Bourgeois and Frida Kahlo. As a leading figure of late second wave into third wave feminist art, Smith has long explored the innumerable intricacies of the female experience. She was born in Germany in 1954 and raised in New Jersey by American opera singer slash actress Jane Lawrence and the esteemed American sculptor and architect Tony Smith. Her father was revered as a pioneer of minimalist sculpture, so it goes without saying that she cultivated a strong sensibility about the creative process, particularly as it pertained to reigning theories about art in the latter half of the 20th century. When she eventually began experimenting with her own art, she would go against the grain and take up a figurative practice at a time when minimalism and abstraction were favored modes of expression. Smith had no official artistic training to speak of when she moved to New York City in the 70s, but she cultivated her aesthetic at a time when women artists in particular were actively scrutinizing the time-worn male gaze in art. Smith joined an art cooperative called Collaborative Projects, which introduced her to untraditional methods, art forms, and materials, and she began experimenting with figural representations of nature and the body. The body is, without a doubt, one of Smith's dearest motifs, and the female body, more specifically, has been the primary lens through which Smith has communicated the kind of sinister realness of adult life. When her father died in 1980, she became obsessed with the body's degenerative nature, and much of her early work from that time evokes a morbid curiosity about death and decay. Her artworks like Hand in Jar from 1983, or the later From Hand to Heart from 1989, are clinical but simultaneously loving in their objective examination. In the mid-80s, Smith's fascination with anatomy prompted a foray into training as an ER technician. Her subsequent familiarity with the inner world of the human body yielded Possession is Nine-Tenths of of the Law in 1985, a series of nine images depicting sexless organs, a heart, a stomach, a bladder, a brain. That same year she created Glass Stomach, followed by Second Choice, a ceramic bowl of organs casually presented as if it were a household fruit basket, an untitled Red Man. Much of her work from this time hints at objection, defined as the state of being cast off, not only in the physical sense, but in a social and a political one. As AIDS tore through New York City in the 80s, Smith was at the forefront of the artists addressing the epidemic with arresting visual works that focused less on organs and more on bodily fluids, which is how AIDS is transmitted. At around the same time, Smith created new artworks that conveyed the politicized body. Come the 90s, Smith's work shifted to full figurative representations of the body as a passive object Object, no less the subject of violation and torment. Bearing religious undercurrents that nod to the crucifixion and flagellation, Smith's sculptures depict women in a spectrum of forsaken states, crouched with claw marks down her back, sat atop a pyre, bruised and impaled leaking fluids, crawling on all fours leaving a trail of blood, partially crucified upside down, and butterflied open with her insides spilling out like ribbons. But not all of Smith's figures evoke shame and humiliation. As much as there is death, there is rebirth. One woman's soul emerges from her lifeless body, marking the beginning of a new narrative. Another is born from a deer. Smith's women are as powerful as they are vulnerable, as wild, intuitive, and sufficient as they are subjected and subverted. Many of them are witchy, magical, and ferocious, in harmony with the natural world, if not in command over it. Smith's recent works are the subject of an exhibition at Pace Gallery in New York City. Entitled Kiki Smith, Murmur, this stunning survey showcases new sculpted works, big and small, etchings and prints that, as the exhibition's title suggests, seem to echo between the natural and supernatural realms. Murmur 
more will remain on view at the gallery's 24th Street location until March 30th, so do not miss it. Thanks for watching Several Circles, and don't forget to subscribe below for our latest videos on historic, modern, and contemporary artists with upcoming or current exhibitions in New York City.